Okay, so chapter two, section one, we're gonna talk about writing and graphing inequalities. We're gonna learn how to write linear inequalities based on um, uh, written descriptions and words. We're gonna learn how to sketch the graph of a linear inequality in one variable, which is gonna end up being a number line graph, this kind of a thing. Um, we're gonna learn how to look at graphs and write the linear inequalities that are represented there. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the inequality symbols. So we've got <clears throat> less than or is less than. You got it, there's a difference between is less than and just less than, because you'll see it different ways. You'll say there's a difference between X is less than five and five less than a number. X is less than five. X is less than five versus um, So I want you guys to be able to notice the difference between here. The, the only word that's different is the word is. But look what it, how it changes. You get X is less than five. That's this, X is less than five. X less than five means you're starting with five and then you're taking X away. So that would actually be X less than five would be five minus X. So that's an important uh, distinction to make in your mind. And then I want you guys to be careful with the way that you say these symbols. Because a lot of people will just start mixing words together, especially when it has the little equal to sign under it. So a lot of, and I'll hear people call this less than or greater than, which really just means it's not equal to it. Less than or greater than is something that we don't really use in, in um, inequalities very much less than or equal to, that's different, right? So um, so for less than, it means it has to be, a, the number has to be smaller. Less than or equal to means it can be smaller or equal to it, okay? So you need to know these symbols, the greater than is more than, greater than or equal to. And then um, there are other little key um, phrases that will, that will clue you off, like is fewer than, um, that's pretty easy because that's uh, pretty much the same as less than. The ones that people tend to have a little bit of trouble with is like the is at most or is at least, is no less than, is no more than. So to say, like if you're saying um, that X is at most five, you're saying it can be five and it can be less than five, but the most it could be is five. So that's why it's less than or equal to, even though it has the word most in it, right? A lot of people, you get into a habit of like, oh, it says most or it says more, that must mean that it's greater than. But you gotta be careful. Is at most means that it has a highest number, but it can be everything below that number too. No more than, no more than five, it could be less than five, it can be equal to five, but it can't be more than five. And then is at least, that's greater than or equal to because at, if it's at least five, then it could be five or it could be bigger. If it's no less than five, it could be five or it could be bigger, but it can't be less than five. So make sure you have that um, in your notes so you can get used to um, translating between words and slide if you get everything from the little chart 
then you're good. If you get that information, like what each symbol looks like and what the phrases are that tell you that symbol, um, then that would be good for this slide. Okay. So then let's take a look at an example where there are some, some sentences that we're gonna translate into inequalities. Okay, so we're gonna write each sentence as an inequality. So I'm gonna kinda take each phrase and turn it into what that um, equals in math. So a number W, we would just write the W. Then uh, minus 3.5. And then we have is less than or equal to. And that is the less than with the little equal to sign under it. and then negative two. So then on part B, three is less than a number N plus five. So three is less than a number n plus five. So number n plus five. For part C, zero is greater than or equal to twice a number X plus one. So twice a number X would be two X and then plus one. So that's an important skill to be able to recognize what phrases in English sentences translate into math um, equations and inequalities. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about um, what it means for a number to be a solution of an inequality. And if you remember with equations, an equation either it had one solution or it had no solution or it could have infinitely many solutions if it was an identity. And Mm, the solutions to inequalities are always big sets of numbers because like X is less than five, every number less than five would be a solution to that inequality. So let's take a look at what that means to be a solution of an inequality. It's any value, any number that makes the inequality true. So an inequality can have more than one solution and most of the time they do. Most of the time they have infinitely many solutions, but now we can actually say what they all are with inequalities. <clears throat> The set of all solutions of an inequality is called the solution set. So one single number can be a solution to an inequality, but the set of all solutions is called the solution set. So um, we can, if we have an inequality like this one, x plus five 
is greater than or equal to negative two, we can test out different values to see if they're solutions. So we can check, is negative six a solution to this inequality? All we would do is we would plug negative six in for X and then test it out. Negative six plus five is negative one. Is that less than negative two? Or I mean, greater than or equal to negative two? And so that's kind of tricky when they're, when the, they're both negative. But if you ever are, um, can't remember, like all, even like, like this, if I'm like, hmm, is that greater? I'll just go to a number line. And remember anything to the right is greater. Anything to the left is less than. And if you notice, like the signs are included in the line. You ever notice that? Less than is over here. Greater than is over there. So then all you got to do is be like, all right, where are these two numbers? All right, if this is zero, then we have negative one and then negative two, right? So it looks so negative one is greater than negative two because it's further to the right. So negative one is greater than negative two, yes. So all you do to check a solution is plug it in to the, to the inequality and see if the inequality is true or not. Like you can see when we plug in a negative seven, negative seven plus five is negative two. And then if you look at the inequality, is negative two greater than or equal to negative two? Yeah, it's not greater than, but it is equal to. And since it's greater than or equal to, you only have to be one of one or the other. So equal to, so yes. And then if you try to check negative eight as a solution, negative eight plus five is negative three, and negative three is not greater than or equal to negative two. Negative three is actually is actually less than negative two. So then negative eight, you would say no, is not a solution to the inequality. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. So we're gonna we're gonna determine whether negative four is a solution of each inequality. So let's start with uh, the first inequality is x plus eight is less than negative three. And so we're gonna test negative four. So we'll plug a negative four in for X. And then negative four plus eight is four. So is four less than negative three? No, four is greater than negative three. So that tells us that the negative four that we plugged in for X is not a solution. So then for B, B is negative 4.5x is greater than negative 21. So to test out negative 4, we're just plug it in for x. So negative 4.5x means negative 4.5 times x. So we're going to do negative 4.5 times negative four, and then see if the inequality is true or not. So negative 4.5 times negative four, negative times negative is gonna be positive. Four times 4.5 is 18. So that's gonna be positive 18. So is positive 18 greater than negative 21? 
Yes. So that means that negative four is a solution to that inequality. So next we'll look at how to graph inequalities. And since we're only doing inequalities with one variable right now, um, we can only graph on a number line. Once you have two variables, then you can do two number lines, which is like a normal graph, the X and Y axis axes. So the, the graph of, a, of an inequality shows all the solutions, or it represents all the solutions on a number line. So um, the graph of an inequality shows the solution set of an inequality on a number line. An open circle is used when a number is not a solution. And a closed circle is used when a number is a solution. An arrow to the left or right shows that the graph continues in that direction. OK, so let's look at um, the first one. A, y is less than or equal to negative 3. So I'm going to put some numbers on my number line. I'll be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then that would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And then when you have an inequality like in its solved form where it's just a variable on one side and another uh, a number on the other side, then what you do is you know you're going to make a circle. You're going to make a circle where that number is. We don't know if it's going to be, um, it's either going to be an open circle or a closed circle like they said up here. And the way we decide is it's an open circle if, if negative three cannot be a solution, is not a solution. And it's a closed circle if negative 3 is a solution. And the way you can tell whether negative 3 is a solution or not is, is there a little equal to sign under here? If it's y is less than or equal to negative 3, then negative 3 can be a solution. So that would be a closed circle. If there wasn't an equal to sign right here, if it was just like this less, less than sign, like on B, then we would have an open circle because negative three wouldn't count as a solution. So this little line, whether this little line is here or not, that tells you whether your circle should be open or closed. If the line is there, your circle should be closed. If the line is not there, the circle should be open. So like this one should have a closed circle. That one, This one, B, should have an open circle. C should have an open circle because there's no equal to line under the inequality. So then what do we do on, um, on A? We're going to make an, a closed circle at negative 3. And then the book will tell you to test, test a number on either side. And that works, right? You could just you could plug in like a 0. Is zero less than or equal to negative three? No, it's actually to the right, um, which means it's greater than. Is negative four less than or equal to negative three? Yeah, it's less than. So then we would draw our arrow going that way. <laughs> 
So then for B, B says two is less than X. Well, we'll still need numbers on our number line and we'll know two needs to be one of them. Zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. You don't have to put all these numbers. If you just have enough numbers to understand where your number line is, that's, that's all you need. Okay, but we do need an open circle at two on this one. And then we can test numbers to see um, which way we draw an arrow. So test uh, like a five. Two is less than five, is that true? Yeah, so that means five is a solution, right? So if five is a solution, that means everything over on that side is a solution. Because, and, it, and another thing I want you to, to realize here is that you can write, you can write this inequality as, um, as X greater than two, right? Two is less than X means the same thing as X is greater than two. So you can write this inequality in either direction. As long as your little inequality arrow is pointing at the same thing. In, in both of these, you see that the arrow is pointing at the two. And you can always remember that, uh, or one way that you can remember, like this is how I kind of remember if things are twisted or bat or, you know, how because we're used to having X on the left. Um, just re I just remember that the inequality sign is like pointing at and laughing at whatever is smaller. Like, haha, you're small, you're short. So the, the inequality is rude, right? So it's pointing and laughing at whatever number is smaller. Um, okay, so you can write inequalities backwards as long as the inequality is pointing at the same thing. And then I also want to point out, well, maybe I'll point this out at the, after I do C. So C is just X greater than zero. So you just need to pick a spot to be zero. I'm gonna have, since there's no equal to sign, I'm gonna have an open circle at zero. And then this says X is greater than zero. Which way are the numbers greater than zero? Off to the right. So here's, here's something that I want to point out to you. If you, if you have, let me just get it like my little highlighter real quick. And I'm gonna highlight these three inequalities. These three inequalities all have the variable on the left side, right? If you have your variable on the left side, then you're always gonna draw your line in the direction that the inequality sign is pointing, right? Y is less than or equal to negative three and we drew our arrow to the left where the inequality sign is pointing. X is greater than two and we drew our line going to the right which is where the inequality sign was pointing. This one X is greater than zero and we drew our line to the right which is where the arrow was pointing. So if you get your, if your variable is over here on the left, then your inequality sign will point in the direction that you're gonna draw your line. So that's an easy way to remember. So we can also take a look at, um, we can just look at a graph and then write the inequality that it represents. So that's the, what we're gonna do next. We're gonna have a couple of graphs that we have to um, look at and determine what inequality is represented um, by that graph. Okay, so these graphs show the height restrictions for H, the height, 
for two rides at an amusement park, right an inequality that represents the height restriction of each ride. So for, uh, for ride A, can you go on the ride if you're 46 inches tall? No. Can you go on the ride if you're 48 inches tall? Yes. And if you're 50? Yeah. So um, H, that's our variable. For this ride, ride A, you, you have to be 48 or more, right? So that means greater than or equal to 48. For ride B, you can be under 52 inches, but you can't you can't be 52 inches tall. And you can't be any taller than 52 inches. You can only be less than 52 inches. So this one would be height is less than 52. No equal to sign under here because open circle says we're not allowed to equal 52. 52 is not a solution. So then to kind of summarize what we've talked about today, we talked about like the words that translate into inequalities. We translated sentences into inequalities. We um, could determine whether solutions were inequalities and we learned about how to graph them. So here is a little uh, summary of the information that we've covered. <clears throat> we've learned about inequalities in words in algebra and on graphs, right? We realize that if you have the equal to sign with your inequality, that means you have a solid closed circle. If you don't have the equal to sign, you have an open circle. And we learned to not say greater than or less than because that would be weird. You'd be right. All right, X is greater than or less than. All right, three. That doesn't even look like that looks like anime or something. I don't know. Not anime, but whatever that text stuff is called. Or text heart. 